Hello everybody. Have you ever wondered why we don't have a vaccine for common cold even though it is such a common infection as the name suggests? Well, in this video, let's learn about that and some science behind it. We all know about common cold. It is a very common infection of our upper respiratory tract which includes our throat and the nose. It is caused by many different viruses. but the most common pathogen that is the infectious agent are the human rhinoviruses the factors influencing the infection are usually the season the age the type of the virus and the severity of the symptoms moreover it is contagious that is the virus and the infection spreads from one person to another you all definitely must have got common cold many times and when you sit near an infected person you must have noticed you also get infected in a few days the virus stays in the saliva and the secretions from the nose and when the infected person sneezes or coughs the virus spreads through the air and enters our body like you all know the symptoms are usually throat pain stuffy or running nose headache fever allergies like sneezing and so on and it can be usually treated by ourselves at home using anti allergy medications pain relievers cough syrups and antiviral medications antibiotics are not effective because they are used to treat bacterial infections but common cold is a viral infection so now to understand why there is no vaccine against common cold Let's first understand how our body fights any disease. The immune system is the body's defense system. It mostly comprises of white blood cells that fight with any substance or cell that does not belong to our body. For example, viral particles are disease-causing agents called pathogens and they are foreign to our body and are fought off by the white blood cells. So, hence the white blood cells are like the soldiers of our defense system like i said pathogens are the disease causing agents like bacteria virus fungi or spores so antigens are basically the chemical structures that are on the outer surface of the pathogens and it serves as an identity since each pathogen has a unique structure so now the white blood cells make antibodies that recognize the antigens and bind to them to destroy the pathogen of the different types of white blood cells a class of cells called b cells make antibodies the primary response to the first attack by a specific pathogen takes place in like 3 to 6 days the b cells get activated and kill the pathogen when the antibody binds to the antigen the b cell then remembers the structure of the antigen and it can respond much faster in case of a second attack this memory prevents us from getting sick later on and it's called immunity so now how do we get this immunity the answer is immunity is acquired after exposure to an antigen our body makes antibodies in two ways either by natural infection by the pathogen or induced through vaccines and this is called active immunity or you can get antibodies from other sources for example babies getting immunity from mother's milk this is called passive immunity that being said let's see how vaccines work vaccines can provide us with immunity by mimicking natural infection so vaccines are composed of a dead or a weak pathogen whose disease causing ability is lost but their surface antigens are still expressed the same our body's immune cells make antibodies specific to the antigens and they develop memory and kill the actual pathogen when exposed in the future So to make a vaccine scientists first identify the pathogen grow them in a lab by modifying their disease causing ability analyze them 
and test this modified pathogen in animal models like mouse models to see if it induces antibody production in the mouse. If it works, Vaccines are made by following specific procedures called good manufacturing protocols. However, it is not so easy to make a good effective vaccine. So, this is how a specific antibody binds to the antigen on the surface of a pathogen. But most of the viruses are made of genetic material called RNA and its sequence keeps changing as they evolve. As the sequence changes, the structure of its surface protein, which is the antigen, also changes. In that case, when the modified virus infects you, the antibodies induced against a different structure of the virus by the vaccine does not target the modified pathogen. That is when the vaccine becomes ineffective. With all this said, Coming back to our question of why we don't have a vaccine for common cold, the major pathogen causing common cold is the human rhinovirus. There are more than 160 different strains or types of the human rhinovirus, each having different antigen structures. They are also highly mutative and keep changing the structure and it's impossible to target all possible antigens and hence there is no vaccine for this common cold. However, we are immune to the common cold since childhood due to multiple exposures and the infection does not cause serious concerns and so we can live with it. On the other hand, for deadly viruses like influenza, measles, etc., we do have effective and successful vaccines. So to demonstrate how antigens and antibodies interact, Let's consider the red block, the virus. It expresses a yellow surface protein with bumps on it. So now let's consider an antibody specific to the structure. Let the black block be the antibody. It binds to the bumped surface and hence it destroys the virus. Now let's consider the same virus but a different strain that has mutated blue surface protein which is smooth without any bumps. The antibody now does not recognize the smooth surface and does not bind to the virus and hence it fails to destroy the virus. So this is the basics of how immunity and vaccination works. Here are some further links explaining the same concepts with fun visuals. I would recommend you to go back and watch them at your own time and of course to explore more on the internet. Hope you now have an overview about the concept and that this video has inspired you to learn more. Thank you so much for listening.